decision and get to work. And so you can see I've broken out my notebook right here. I've got my fodder figures all picked out and collected and I've got my, um, my reference images up. And so I'll kind of show you what this whole process looks like. Uh, but first, let's narrow down the list a little bit. Um, I thought that Lady Bullseye was a big contender. I actually already had a Lady Bullseye in the works and she's pretty close to completion. The base colors are all laid down, uh, joints are prepped, and that would have been really, really easy for me to go through. It's a cool character. I think my execution is pretty good, uh, but I thought that just kind of passing off a figure that I already have wouldn't necessarily be the best thing to do for um, the summer swap here. Here's the Lady Bullseye that I had been working on. Um, you can see it's all soft lines right here. Um, she's a little bit dusty as well. So I'd have to repaint, put the details on there. You can see kind of from the face um, sculpting, all that hair is sculpted. I put the bun in the back. Uh, these are needles that I um, sculpted into a, a different bun. So I think that this works great. I think that this would be fine. But like I said, I wanted to put something together from scratch for this project. Um, Modern Dracula was definitely something that I was interested in, but I basically do male customs all the time. Um, and I wanted to challenge myself a little bit more. And so um, I made the decision to go with Betsy Braddock in her Captain Britain uniform. I chose the most modern incarnation that I could given the list that I received. And to those who know my tastes in comic characters, that should come as no surprise. I also picked this character because Psylocke is one of the most popular and most interesting X-Men characters to date. She has had so many different costumes and appearances that collectors are always searching for new figures and renditions of her. Part of the reason that she has so many different looks is that she is a character that is constantly being reinvented. Although she is now synonymous with the X-Men, she first appeared in Captain Britain issue number 8. Then, nearly a decade later, she was folded into the X-Family by Chris Claremont. Despite the fact that Psylocke wasn't featured in the X-Men animated series, she remains one of the most popular characters in the franchise today. Casual fans of the character may have no understanding of her complex backstory, and are probably all the happier for that. It is fraught with intrigue, body swapping, secret kill squads, and the like. The most popular incarnation of Psylocke actually features Betsy Braddock inhabiting the hand-trained assassin Quana, which is why Psylocke is sometimes depicted as an English woman and sometimes as a Japanese woman. This version of Psylocke, however, sees her restored to her original body and donning the mantle of Captain Britain once more. Let's see how her current look from the X-Books transfers over to figure form. Let's bring it over to the sketchbook and show you a little bit about uh, kind of my whole process. And so this is a pretty rough sketch. Um, not trying to get any face details. I don't. I'm not really concerned with realism. I don't. It's not a picture I'm drawing for a commission or anything. Um, and so I usually hold a figure. This uh, domino wasp combination um, is not something that I ended up using. But I usually hold up the figure to kind of get where those articulation points are going to be, just to let me recognize where, um, you know, I'm gonna have to work around things, what the sculpt will look like and all that good stuff. So I held that up there, got the size that I was working with and then started to talk about the um, costume details. And one of the things I noticed as I did my, my referencing here is that um, I'll, her costume changes pretty dramatically from issue to issue and sometimes from panel to panel. Um, and so you can see that sometimes her cape, it has this asymmetry. Sometimes like you can see here has these kind of clasps for each of them as well. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of different thoughts that are put down um, onto the page here. Um, so you can recognize, you know, here's the base body of the figure. I'm going to have to deal with some glove cuffs that are there. I'm going to have to sculpt some shoulder armor. Um, obviously, the chest piece, is that called a cuirass maybe? Um, this is probably the most visually striking piece of the entire thing. And so I got to make sure that it's going to have that shape, but it's also going to be able to articulate. I zoomed over here to get a little bit more of kind of that pattern down, this big red um, X. 
not only does it make you know the British flag, um, but it also makes that X for for X Men. You know, um, this is kind of the pattern that I'm looking at here. And again, this kind of changes as well. Um, but overall, not a ton of sculpting, but pretty complicated sculpting was something that I recognized. Right, boots that come up to you know knee high. She's got some knee pads that go along with that as well. And then I've got question marks. What type of cape? do I want to go with? I thought that this would be a great challenge for me. Um, I want to get good practice with cloth goods. I have about three other figures that I was working on. Um, and when I got to the cloth, cloth goods stage, I, I couldn't figure it out and I just scrapped them. One of them was an um, infamous Iron Man and I finished everything but the cape about a month before they revealed um, the official one. Um, I've also got another one that I'm still working on now that has a really big villainous billowing cape and he's a Thor villain. I'll give you that clue. Um, but we'll see if maybe with my new skills um, I'll be able to develop one for that. Uh, but I, I want to kind of you know, tackle that a little bit. I have an idea about how maybe I'll do two different options just in case that doesn't go well or just in case my, my partner doesn't like um, doesn't like cloth goods. I know there are people like that. And I, I am one of those for some of them as well. Um, we need a, a sword here. She uses kind of an energy effect sword that looks like a knight sword or kind of like an Excalibur. And so I'm going to get into contact with some casters and see if they have any of these swords that they'd be able to cast in a translucent plastic or try and come up with any other solutions about that. Um, the hair is something that I'm going to sculpt completely. Um, it's not something that I do regularly. Um, but again, this is all about kind of challenging myself. I want to work with cloth goods. I want to sculpt hair. I want to, um, I want to do makeup on a female face to make it look, um, you know, polished and beautiful, um, just to kind of, I guess, broaden my skill set. And then I want to make a, a helmeted head because this is something that she has in some of those panels when she has more of a kind of an armored up going into battle look as well. And so I think the shape of it is very reminiscent of the Black Knight. So I'll get my hands on one of those figures and see what I can do about that. Um, and then, you know, the question becomes, do I want it to be removable? Because a lot of the time what that does is it misshapes the head underneath it. And by that time, you know, when you take the helmet off, it's not a head that looks very good um, anyway. Uh, over here, you can see the sketch of where her cape kind of drapes, and you can see there's this tremendous asymmetry that goes along with it. So we'll see if that's, you know, how I end up um, coming up with something and, and what that cape looks like. So I guess a um, couple other things that I want to show you are what the figures that I'll be dealing with as far as the base body goes. Um, one of the things that I've recognized with Marvel Legends females is that they seem to get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier and really in a superhero um, you want somebody that has more musculature to them I don't think Betsy especially in this incarnation I don't think she's really all that um, you know curvaceous it's not like the Psylocke of, of the 90s but I do want her to have some some heft here and so what I came up with was a combination of Songbird um, and Mockingbird. I liked that Mockingbird's uh, legs were a little bit thicker. Well, another thing is that she's got these armored boots on. For her, they're just shin coverings though. Um, and so I had to do something about, or I'll have to do something about this backside right here. I'm gonna, I think, probably dremel these clips off and then uh, sculpt all the way around so it looks like just one solid piece. Um, the knee pads give me something to sculpt onto but obviously that's not the shape or the design that i'm going to be going for um, and so i'd like to change that out uh, but i think i want to use kind of the upper torso here it's more of a, a kind of plain torso to sculpt on top of won't have to deal with you know dremeling and reshaping and resizing and all those things um, but then ultimately you have these two different head sculpts and so um I've got to decide which of these, you know, I'd like to use, which of these I think works better. Um, I'm going to strip them both bald and so the hair isn't really um, essential for it. But since I'm going to be mashing these figures together, I think I'm going to ultimately make two different head sculpts, one helmeted 
and one not. So these are what the figures look like. Next time you see them, they're gonna be all disassembled and reassembled and sculpted and all those different types of things. And we'll see how this works out. Let's take a peek just one time at uh, my reference images and then we'll see you in the next video. All right, and so here is the mess that is my uh, workstation here. You can see that um, I've got extra parts over here. Um, I've got all the tools of the trade up there at the front. Um, that pickle jar is usually filled with a whole bunch of water. Right now it's precariously paste, placed up there. Um, I've got Lady Bullseye. I've got an iPad for images, for watching something while I'm working. All my tools over here um, kind of close at hand. And then I've got this board up in the front there. And so as you can see, these are all of the different pictures that I found of Betsy that gave me all the different angles that I need for the helmeted head, for the weapons, for her hair, which has that really complicated braid into the ponytail, which will be really fun for me to realize as well. But as I sit here, um, you know, I'll be able to work on these and check those uh, kind of at all times. And so hopefully next time I talk with you guys, um, I'll have some progress made. All right, catch me on the next one. We'll see you then.